Hello, Global Supply Chainers. So happy to have you all here today for our second live event in SC0X Supply Chain Analytics. Uh, I am Ima Borrella. I'm a MAFOS doctoral associate here at MIT. I'm originally from Spain, and I'm the course lead of SC0X of this run. And um, most of you already know me, so uh, welcome. The course is going great. We have more than 28,000 enrolled students and 1,779 of them are verified. So great learning community. Today, I'm really happy to have with me uh, Dr. Matthias Winkenbach. Welcome, Matthias. Thanks so much for being here with thanks, us. Thanks for having me, hi. Uh, Dr. Ma Dr. Winkenbach is the director of the MIT Megacity Logistics Lab. And um, he's a research scientist here at the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. And his current research focuses on multi-tier distribution network design in the context of urban logistics and last mile delivery, urban freight policy and infrastructure design, as well as data analytics and visualization in urban logistics context. And he has a wide and really interesting bio that you can consult in the link I shared with you earlier for the live event. So thanks, Matthias. Today we'll be discussing uh, with him a very interesting topic, urban distribution network design for B2B last mile delivery. So the agenda briefly will be as follows. First, Matthias will uh, introduce the topic, discussing about data-driven urban distribution network design. After that, we will let you go to the breakout rooms. We will propose a couple of questions for you to discuss with your peers. And you will have 15 minutes there. And then come back to the main room again with your comments and questions. And Matthias will continue his presentation and uh, introduce the idea of how they will be accounting for a certainty in these uh, network design models. And uh, of course, he will present a case study of a project they develop in, in Bogota, right? Yes, exactly. OK. Then we'll have uh, 10 minutes or so for questions and answers, and then we'll wrap up the live event. Okay, okay sounds good. So let's begin, Matthias. All right. Whenever you want. Welcome once again from, from my side. So I'm going to talk a little bit about urban last mile distribution uh, network design. Some of you might have already heard something about this. And um, as we heard before, the second part of this presentation will then focus a little bit on how do we actually do this if certain elements of the network or of the underlying market that we're trying to serve are uncertain. Um, but let's start with the basics. Um, and the basics are uh, relatively, um, well, trivial, you might think. But actually, one big challenge in urban distribution network design is how do you actually capture, let's say, the complexity of an urban market? And complexity means, for instance, the geographic complexity. Cities don't usually come in a standard shape. They are not perfectly round or perfectly square. So you need to have a way of basically capturing the geographical shape of a city. And then you also have things like demand being not just uniformly distributed across the entire city, but there are very non-trivial patterns in the way that your demand that you're trying to serve might be distributed. And the way that in our research, we typically tackle this, and here you see uh, on the slide the example of Bogota, basically the capital of Colombia, um, you see that we well, we call it pixelize the city. So we cut the city into a large number of city segments, or we, we usually call it pixels. And in this example here, you, for instance, see a number of, I think, about 2,000 pixels that we cut Bogota into. And each pixel is basically one square kilometer um, of the city area. And you see, with this pixelization, we already capture kind of the geographic complexity of the city, because we only consider parts of the landscape that are actually carrying demand. So where people are actually living, or in this case study, where actually some retail activity is going on, so where there are customers to be served. And then what we can do for every single pixel is we can characterize the most important pieces of the input um, data uh, that are relevant for the network design problem. So for instance, one or the most important part of the data is demand. Like how many customers do we have per pixel? So what's the density of stops that need to be served? Or what's the drop size distribution of this stop? Meaning, like when we visit one of these customers, how many packages or cases or what kind of volume do we actually have to deliver to a single stop? 
And then the other side um, um, is the infrastructure that we're operating on, like the road network infrastructure, for instance. And again, we can use those pixels to characterize that infrastructure in a high resolution uh, kind of way. So we can, for every single pixel, for instance, use OpenStreetMaps data or Google API data to inform the model about the network capacity. So how many lanes they are, how there are, how many uh, like roads there are, how dense the road network is, um, whether there's any directionality in there, so whether there are one-way streets, basically, and also how direct uh, vehicles can travel between one customer and the other, whether they can almost travel on a straight line distance or whether maybe because of one-way streets they have to make a lot of detours to get from A to B. All of this can be characterized mostly based on open, uh, um, openly available data sources like Google um, on the pixel level, so on a very high resolution. And the result might look like something like this. So the case study that we're going to discuss later on actually uh, produced this kind of map of uh, Bogota. You see, again, the different pixels. And every single pixel here represents one square kilometer of Bogota. And we just color coded it a little bit. So the color of the pixel tells you a little bit about the density of customers in that area. So you, for instance, see that in the, in the right part of the map, you see that downtown, that reddish area, which is characterized by a lot of traditional retail, for instance, so a lot of small stops that need to be served. And uh, the green areas are uh, characterized by fewer customers, so, for instance, bigger retailers. Um, however, the size of the pixel tells you something about the volume that needs to go there. So how many um, cases or packages do go to that pixel in total? And you see that there are some pixels that are pretty big and pretty red. That means a lot of volume, but a lot of customers, so a lot of fragmentation. And other pixels that are similarly big, but much more green. So there we have a stronger concentration of demand. And this kind of complexity you can only depict if you work with this kind of high resolution discretization of the city, because you cannot just assume that demand is evenly distributed and it's the same everywhere within the city. That would not basically pay respect to the true complexity of an urban market. Now, the question is, how do we design distribution networks that serve this kind of demand? Um, and distribution network design can actually be explained very simply. You have probably three major decisions. First decision is, what kind of facilities are you using to serve demand? So how many distribution centers do you need, and where do you locate them? And then if you have a multi-tiered distribution network where you have smaller satellite facilities somewhere within the city where some sort of transshipment from larger vehicles to smaller vehicles, for instance, takes place, you also need to decide how many of these do you need and where do you locate them. That's kind of the first level decision, uh, the facility decision. And the way we usually model this is uh, with a mixed linear programming model, so with a mathematical model that helps us optimize the network. And basically, the decision on the number and location of facilities is mostly taken care of through binary decision variables. So you have a set of candidate locations, and those binary variables tell you which of those candidate locations to use to locate, for instance, a distribution center or a satellite facility. The second level of, of decisions relates to the assignment of service areas to the different facilities. So let's say your first level decisions told you you have one distribution center and three satellite facilities. The next thing you want to know is which part of the city is actually being served from which of these facilities. And again, this can be modeled uh, within the mixed integer linear programming model as a binary variable, maybe also as a, let's say, a floating point variable um, that is, however, constrained to be somewhere between 0 and 1. But for simplicity's sake, let's assume it's also a binary variable. And those binary variables, and there's a lot of them, will then tell you which of the pixels that you saw earlier will be allocated to which of the facilities. And that basically then defines the service area being served from each of the facilities. And then the last decision level is actually the modal choice. So let's say you have different vehicle types to choose from, a big 10 pallet truck, a smaller truck, and let's say an electric uh, bus or something. Then this is going to be modeled again as a binary choice, right? For every allocation between a facility and a city pixel, you then make the choice like which of those three ve uh, vehicle options you actually want to activate to, to serve demand in that pixel from that facility. So it's basically a whole lot of um, binary or integer variables that we're working here. That's why we use mixed integer linear programming, whereas the objective function is, in the most cases, 
uh, the total cost of operation. So most companies that we work with want to minimize the cost of serving demand, and that's usually then uh, basically a, a pretty long formula that takes into account different cost components like routing cost, equipment cost, facility cost, and so on and so forth. The most tricky part is the routing cost. The routing costs need to be approximated because you can imagine if you're dealing with a city like Bogota, you're dealing with thousands of customers that might be served on a single day. That means you're dealing with hundreds of vehicle routes. And it's very hard to explicitly optimize vehicle routes um, for the scale of an entire city. Um, so that's why we use approximation techniques, and I'm going to touch upon that in the next slide. But approximation techniques that basically don't explicitly optimize the vehicle routing part, but basically just tell us what is a good estimate for the optimal length or the optimal duration of routes into a certain area of the city, and to what cost do, do these lengths and durations actually translate to. Um, obviously, there are also different optimization object objectives sometimes. Some companies want, don't want to optimize for cost, but maybe for market reach. Maybe they want to optimize their emissions footprint uh, in a city, um, or other things like responsiveness to the customer, service level. All of these could be potential optimization objectives. Most of the models that we build and that we see in the literature focus on cost, though. So I mentioned that we use approximation techniques. And in the course of this uh, little session, we can't explain this in very much detail. But the thing that I want you to take away is that doing a location routing problem, so deciding at the same time where to locate facilities and how to route vehicles around them, is an extremely complex thing to do. It's a combination of a location allocation problem and a vehicle routing problem. Both of them are known to be was known NP-hard, so computationally very complex. And obviously, if you combine the two and try to serve, solve them jointly, you get an extremely complex problem. And that could not be solved in reasonable amounts of time. So we use continuum approximation, which uh, basically can look like something like this. If you're really interested, uh, reach out to me, and I can give you some literature to dig into. But basically, what it does is it just uses um, geometric probability uh, theory to basically estimate how long a vehicle would travel within a certain area of demand with a certain number of customers, assuming that it would follow an optimal route. So we're not explicitly figuring out that optimal route. We're just assuming that there is some optimization going on. And then we can basically um, use probability theory to estimate the distances between two stops, and therefore also the total distance of a route, the duration of that route, and the cost of that route. And that's what a whole bunch of the research projects that we're doing here is actually leveraging every single day. And I think that brings us, so this was a very brief introduction to just network design as such, without any stochasticity involved yet. And I think now you're going to break out to discuss what could be done on top of that. Thanks, Matthias. It was a great presentation. I enjoyed very much. Uh, it was brief, but we will have more after the breakout rooms. So please join the breakout rooms now and meet your peers. Um, we will have some CTAs uh, moderating or facilitating the discussion in a few breakout rooms. You can see their pictures and their names in the, in the screen right now. And there's a couple of questions we would like you to discuss. So these are just some ideas to guide your discussion. We would like you to talk about what you just heard and how these connect with uh, what you have learned during the past four weeks in SC0X. So um, just uh, discuss how the techniques that you've learned uh, applied can be applied to resolve a real and complex network design problem, like uh, the ones uh, they are uh, approaching in the Megacity Logistics Lab. They are dealing with that every day. And uh, the second question, we like to think that in all our problems in uh, SC0X, we have also always assumed a deterministic context in which everything is stable, doesn't change. But we know reality changes continuously, and the cities particularly are very complex um, environments, contents, where there are very, very uh, a lot of factors that can affect uh, our network design. So uh, how would you take uncertainty into account when designing a network design model? So we, would let, we know, maybe you're not an expert in, the, in this area, but you know a little bit about network design by now. By now. We've been um, like learning about it in SEC So we would like you to give it a thought. How would you introduce uh, uncertainty into these models so they are more realistic? So um, see you in 15 minutes. <laughs>